line up. Right, yeah, look. Can I see it? Can I see it? Is, can you see it from there? Can you lower it, lower, lower, and to your left. Lower and to your left. Oh, wow. There you go. Wow, nice. Nice. Yeah, nice. You can't see it. You're not on. Yeah, no, I've seen it. I've seen it. We can't okay. Why can't we? Well, all right. So, okay. So let's start with this plant here, right? You can you can buy it. You can buy this at the at the garden store, right? At the, at the... All right. So let's go about measuring this, right? So the length of uh, this beak that looks like a beak of a of a of a heron, right, is a little bit shorter than the stem. See that? So we step. Let's establish this, which it looks like it's kind of a focal point. Um, and um, this space in here, right? See how? See if we had to put yeah. the central, right? So this space in here is slightly shorter than that right so we could stay we could draw a line here that represented the, 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 the direction of the stem right and uh, we can block in the length of the beak here right this beak in here has to be all right I want to make sure that I have enough space on the left side oh Cynthia let me see Cynthia there you go are you there Cynthia hey Cynthia Okay, so uh, see what I'm see what I'm, I'm doing. I am comparing now the length of this because I want to start with this because from here stem a lot of stuff, um, and this is slightly longer than this spacing here, right? Slightly bigger, and um, this is slightly shorter than this, right? So now what we can do we can do this once you establish the length of the beak, right, which is about like this, right, it's like gently sloping down, right, and uh, from here coming up like this, right, uh, we want to make sure that, now I made it a little bit bigger, that we have this measurement in here uh, bigger than this measurement in here, which is good now, right, it's good, and uh, now we want this measurement here, the stem, to be slightly longer than this, right? Which is now here, right? So, um, it's a beautiful curve. So we block the beak, right? You, if you look at this beak here, I, I'm gonna call it beak, right? But um, um, we have this portion here that curves up like this, a little bit higher, then the end of of the beak right so here a little bit a little bit lower right and then from here it goes down at a slightly more pronounced angle You've got a curve it's on the neck of the heron right see the neck of the heron and then it goes down Like that. So um, let's try to block in this, right? This part in here. So let's see. See how high it is. That looks like the highest point, right? Take them. Take my beak, right? The beak of the bird here, and I compare it to the height. And oh, look! It's it's very similar. It's very similar. See that? So I take this measurement in here and put it up here. That is the highest petal, right? There's another beak here, right? Another bud that is that open, right? This is this this flower. It it, it looks like a I don't know. It could be seen as beautiful or it could be seen as as alien right something some alien creature right with all these fangs and uh, 
spike site. So now we can look at this, right? This point in here where this orange uh, uh, orange petal stems, what is that? It looks like it's slightly off the center, right? Like quite a lot off the center. So here, let me see. Okay, here. And then it goes up at an angle. That, see that? Try to copy that angle. Uh, I want to eyeball, I can just eyeball the, the height of this, right? I don't need to measure that. And from here, I go up to the highest point. What is the highest point? Is past the back see that, of the stem. See that? Here. That's the highest point. So from here, I create a line that goes down, up like this, right? More or less. I'm creating this, this line here, right? So here I have now another. Look, look how... All the all the things are kind of lined up like that. See that here? See this? That's the blue petal. And um, now we have uh, this other beak that stems from the curve of the beak of the heron. And uh, how long is it? All right. From the tip to the point where this second thing stems, which I eyeball, is the same as, see that? From here to here is the same as from here to here. Make sense? So I eyeball this point in here, right? Now take this and then move it here. That's that point where it is in latitude now we're going to see the longitude where is this tip is going down to about here all right that is where the beak ends here the rest we can eyeball right cynthia we, uh i'm using uh, and marie also is using a uh, hot press paper you can use so a cold press. That's fine, but it looks like a, oh, it looks I like a, press. you have uh, hot press. I do. I also have a hot press. I mean, if you already started on cold press, it's, that's fine. You can continue with that. It's not. It's not. Uh, that's all right. Uh, just, just give me a minute. I have a problem finding the zoom lock weekend all the time. <laughs> you. Uh, okay. it, uh, Cynthia, the zoom link is always in. Um, in Google Classroom. I know. I, I have a problem. But anyway, I got, I got it. I oh, okay. Okay. But if you go in Google Classroom, right, uh, and you, the first <laughs> thing on top is it says Zoom, Zoom link. You should find it there. It's, it's always the same, right? Okay. Sorry. Hmm. Okay. 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 The hot press is not so exorbitant, isn't it? It looks very the hot the hot sorry, Cynthia? It's it's not very uh, absorbent, is it? No, yeah, no, but it's good for smooth uh, for, for high detail, for very high detail. I see. So last, I can, last week I used cold press. How, how, how did you go? How did you go? Well, I sent you a copy of, of the flower, but I'm looking forward to getting the details in this week. You, you're looking forward to, to do what? To using the hot press. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, the hot press is uh, it's very good for high, high detail. So I'm trying to block in these this group of leaves here, the, the petals here. See that? We have one here and one here, right? So let's say one here and one here. And there is this other petal here, thin in the middle here. 
So for now, I just want to block in um, the general volume occupied by the general shape occupied by these petals, right? So one, two, and then we go uh, this blue thing here, which is really interesting. It looks like a big meme thorn, right? I never had this plant. I've seen it always, but never had it. You guys ever owned a plant like this? The birds well, of, the stock the, of it at the store. We can buy them at the flower store. Yeah. But not the plant. It's, oh, the flower. Yeah. The flower? They don't sell the plant? Right. <laughs> so can block in now uh, so I have these this petal here right uh, now let's see we could block in this group of petals here so you have one two three right actually one two three four so eyeballing the point here where these this group of petals stem from about here right here and then so now we have a group it goes up like this right up for that other group. Here, right? Then we have this one goes straight up like this. So we we're gonna definitely gonna need some some nice orange tonight, right? Mm -hmm. to orange, you don't use it much, but when you use it, it's fun. It's happy color, very happy color. Uh, so this stems out like this, right? And this goes out horizontally, right? Almost. And then the blue one here in the middle here, right? Like that. So, um, below oh, yeah. here now we have uh, some petals, right? Let's see, this is down here it goes out a little bit and then makes a little comma right toward it ends up here out and then like that so harriet will not be able to come because as you know she's got covid and she says hi um, oh, she's very tired. Yeah, she's uh, she's coughing. I just uh, was uh, just on the phone with her just now to see how she's feeling. She called me yesterday and she went to be at the live drawing session, but of course she had to mm -hmm. cancel. So we'll see if we can get uh, a Zoom organized for her because it's going to have to be you know, segregated for quite some time. And who, who is that little bit? Harriet. Harriet. Harriet, yeah. Oh, no. Give her a call. Give her a call. She would like to oh, talk. Yes. To. Thank you. Thank you. I will. Does she know where she got it, the COVID? Probably she got, she got it from the corral, she says. Oh. I know two people at the shore that came down with it, too. At the shore? Yeah this weekend huh it's a uh, so the thing is is that 
um, people took off the mask. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, Harry is pretty, is pretty um, uh, strict about it, but when you go to Coral, you know, you're going to sing, you got to take it off, so. But I went to the market today. I, I, me and my son, we are the only one with a mask. Nobody else had the mask on. So. Uh, they're idiots. Idiots. They are. Mm -hmm. They are. And then people look at me bad when I when I wear the masks. Like they don't, you know. Like, are you stupid? I, I don't get. It. I really don't understand people anymore. You just have to think you're much smarter than them. Yeah, no. There's there's people. There are lots of people that think that this all the, the conspiracy people, right? Think that it's all conspiracy that. We are all full wearing the mask and this and that, right? Not thinking about other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they don't think well, the problem the problem with that um, wait. So the problem now is also the fact that with all these home tests, right? Um, people don't rely on tests that are very marginally accurate. So they test, the test says, no, you don't have it. Maybe they have it. And they keep being, uh, you know, contagious to other people for a long time. Or if they get tested and then they have it, they don't stay inside. They don't report it. And they keep spreading it. So the numbers are down also because of that, I'm thinking. Right? So, wow, this is like a, when I wake up in the morning, this, this thing in here. That's why I had my hair cut today. Wake up in the morning like that, and I say, "Oh God!" <laughs> the mohawk. We could have gotten the mohawk. Like the mohawk, like that, right? <laughs> so. Um, I'm gonna clean it up, right? And then I'm going to create a, a cleaner drawing, right? You guys in the minute? Mm, I'm catching up. Okay. So. <clears throat> I'm gonna try not to rub the paper too hard because we are seeing it can it can chafe, right? It can chafe and then uh, and then the watercolor doesn't doesn't spread nice and even. All right, so now we're gonna draw a little bit more accurately. I'm gonna enlarge this because you already, you have the drawing, so you, I mean the the copy of the work, so you don't really need to see this all the time, right? But one thing that everybody says it's a, is that the COVID process is not that bad now. Right? It's probably a very weak strain. But um, everybody says uh, they, they have a great exhaustion, sense of exhaustion. Yeah. 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 It takes a while to go away. as wavy kind of thing here this part is bad basically yeah.
Okay, so then we have this. I'm gonna start with the blue spike here and then go counterclockwise. So, so, you know, the leaves they tend to be more or less, right? I mean, that don't, we don't have to be too obsessed with the precision of the shape of the leaves. They are moving. Can I ask you to, to keep the dog in another room or? Yeah, let me, he's up, she's upstairs, let me go. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotcha. So sorry, I didn't realize you could hear her. Oh, yeah, she's yeah. Basically, she's a good little doggy. She just... They can be very loud little doggy, right? That's what they have, right? They, yeah. they want to be heard, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So as we draw this, we can also start thinking about how to approach this. And you see, the, the these these petals have a a kind of a yellow glow down here. Mm -hmm. So what we could do, we could block in a, um, a group of petals like this, right? Like this. Um, start with this yellow, very weak yellow, and put it everywhere. As we do that, we create the base of yellow, um, then we have this kind of gradually dis disappearing. And then we put the orange over here on the wet area of yellow so that, that that orange kind of spreads out evenly. I'm thinking uh, medium, carnio cal yellow medium. Yeah, and it looks like a warm yellow. very windy here oh, 
sunny and no, yeah. the wind kind of blowing. <clears throat> I got all this my my dogwood and uh, azalea and all the flowers flowering is beautiful beautiful day yeah mine mine here are beautiful too it's amazing too bad in a few days so we don't uh a couple a week ago i look out the window and it looked like it snowed because the cherry the cherry tree just dropped all the petals and the driver was white with petals cherry petals were beautiful You see, guys, we don't have to be super accurate with the, this pedal, but more or less, right? See, going back to what we were discussing, I think we were, we were discussing, I oh, can't remember was with you, but uh, that uh, um, uh, that discussion about uh, the the optical tool that the old master wear, all the old master was supposedly using, right? Um, I don't think, number one, I don't think that is true. There were some were using it, that's for sure, but not everybody, and uh, and not so pedantically as. Uh, um, you know, uh, the Hockney. Hockney, yeah, Hockney said, right? Because uh, they had a great training, were drawing the whole time. Definitely, this is not done with an optical device. This is clearly illustration and um, done by observation. Well, in, when he built that room, uh, Hockney, uh -huh. he built the room to. Uh, uh, to the scale uh, of the painting mm -hmm. and uh, to show how that all works. Uh, they showed, they responded to him from the Reichs Museum by showing that there was a hole in the canvas where they had, where he had put a uh, pin uh -huh. to draw his lines from his perspective. I mean, I, there are there are tools that that uh, kind of Leto and uh, uh, other people are using, right? Like boxes, like camera obscura. Uh, I think that uh, um, quite a lot of artists were using those tools, but it is not. It was not, I think, so absolute as uh, as how how can you would have us to believe, right? His thesis was that um, it's un it, nobody can explain the radical jump from um, uh, the Middle Ages, from the end of the Middle Ages to the beginning of the Renaissance. How did it go from uh, a very crude uh, representation to all of a sudden being able to do accurate Portraits. Yeah, but it was really not accurate, right? Uh, not 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 the sudden because it was two hundred years. Mm -hmm. So so in the meanwhile, it, it it's it's corresponding with with anatomy, with perspective, with uh, uh, all the theory of Leonardo on light, right? How the light affects the form, etc. Uh, so it was a, a slow process. It's not like a, and you see a progression, right? So. If it were sudden, it would be within like five years. But if you look at the early uh, anatomical drawing, the, the figure, anatomical figure, I mean, I mean accurate an figure that they consider anatomy by Polaiolo, for example, they are, you know, still kind of right, tentative. They're not like they are suddenly are very realistic. And gradually, little by little, little by little, you see these artists that develop an understanding and they also have there's also personal style, right? So you see the body painted by Leonardo is different from the body painted by, by Michelangelo. 
and by Caravaggio and, and so on. So they have they have quite a, a interesting personal approaches to, to depicting the human body. So that's why I, you know, um, but that's why probably they, they only use only uh, Vermeer for that. And um, there is no naked people in Vermeer, right? Yeah. Well, um, you know, for example, um, uh, Masaccio's uh, Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. yeah, um, is not really sophisticated, but it's not primitive either. So. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, exactly. But um, what I'm saying is if it were a, a lens, you would have a quite accurate depiction of the human body, but you don't. Uh, and in, in Masaccio, right? Um, Giotto, Giotto is kind of start having, uh, you know, the first uh, copying the figure, etc. But still, still is a Gothic artist, so uh, Italian Gothic, but still Gothic. And Pollaiolo is one of those that start looking at dissection and, and attend the dissection. And you see, you see the anatomy start being there, but it's not accurate yet. It's not. I mean, it is accurate, but. No, it does not have that level of confidence that you will see in, in later works when uh, the dissection, uh, uh, both performed by artists or artists attended it, is much more common. Um, and um, you wouldn't explain why all those uh, descriptions of... Um, uh, how to copy the body by various color, like how to do it, how, why go with the skeleton, refer themselves to uh, polycletus, uh, all the classic tradition is, is then resumed. They wouldn't need to study any of that, but they did. Um, I mean, if they, they wouldn't need to study any of that if they would have used the camera, but they did study it because they, you know, uh, at least... Uh, the Renaissance um, up until till the early Baroque, Velasquez were definitely not using that, right? They were not using it, but then of course there are artists that did use it. And I do believe that uh, Vermeer used it also because the Dutch, uh, and re remember um, Leeuwenhoek, I think is pronounced, the guy that first used the microscope uh, to, to look at tiny little microorganism, right? He was Dutch, so they were they were playing with those things. They were um, studying the world with those lenses. So, you know, um, but um, what I'm saying is, I think that um, those theses are too across the board, right? They say all these guys were using the lenses or whatnot, yeah. and and if you look at all the sketches, if you look at all the drawings. That the preparation that these guys were making. I mean, right? Like, why did they need those, right? If they were using the lens. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I have his books. So I'll I'll look up what the, what the year is he thinks it took place. Yeah, I have it too. I I read a little bit and then I stopped because I couldn't stomach it. <laughs> but I had to, <laughs> I had to read it right before I. Before I say too many bad things about um, Hockney. Uh, but there is a documentary that shows uh, this um, artist, not not even an artist, is a is an engineer or, or something like that. Uh, that designs uh, TV, so he knows about optics, etc. And he created a studio where he reproduced a painting by by Vermeer using this optical device he thinks he used. And it's quite convincing, actually. It's really quite convincing, but um, it doesn't prove that everybody was using it. Right? Yeah. Also, because he did so few paintings, you have to believe that he's, he was very, um, uh, uh, his method was very tedious. 
Yeah, I mean, this 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 poor guy that copied it, he, it took him forever, forever to do it. Uh, and he was going crazy, but that also was not his job, right? He was he was in jail, but he did a quite a quite good work with the with um with this optical device. But you, um, they had to strap the models to a chair when they do that, because if you move a tiny, tiny little bit, then you don't have a, don't have. A, so they kind of strap them up with a, you know, a met, that kind of kind of device. Uh, to to tie their head, to tie their body, to stop it. Actually, the body they use a mannequin, but when they had to paint the the head, the face, then they had to strap the model to a chair with a um, with with cordage and leather straps and whatnot. But that's that's what it is, right? I I I, I don't think that is not true. I think that is true. But I just sent you an article about that. Uh. I just sent you an article about that. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, I uh, Van, uh, Van Dyke. Oh, Van Dyke, right? Yeah. Yeah, Van Dyke makes this beautiful, uh, incredibly realistic line drawing, right? That you wonder they were using a machine or a. But this being said, there are there are paintings. Uh, there's one painting made by Green, I think, that uh, uh, posted. Um, uh, he posed a model, a young model, in the same pose as one of Van Dyck's painting, but and it's very, very, very realistic. But he painted it totally from life. So what I'm saying is that yeah, some people might have used it, some people might have not, and depending on you know the style. The article I sent you, uh, Van Dyke put his portrait in all the saints. Uh, and in order to get the, uh, uh, like Saint Sebastian and some of the others, uh -huh. they had the, the, uh, the article describes how they bound the models into those positions <coughs> to hold them in that position. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> I hope they pay them enough. <laughs> well, generally, they're with the help. So, if you guys are ready, um, tell me when you're ready, we can start with the color, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, I, want, I would like to start with a group of petals, just this one maybe, right? Uh, and yeah. without doing the, uh, the whole thing everywhere, and uh, I see that yellow glow there. So I want to block in that yellow glow there and put the yellow pretty much everywhere. And then we're going to put the orange on top of that, right? So yellow, cadmium, medium, or uh, that should do, right? So I'm going to come down like this. Stop here, right? What side brush you use? And then you see we need, we need a glow here, right? So we're going to leave that area. Um, very light here, right? And if we need to, if that the yellow creates a line is too um, sharp, we dry up the brush, we'll rinse it, dry it up, right? And then soften up the passage, soften up the margin of the yellow between the yellow and the white. Yellow, right? Right. It would be interesting, guys, if you could take a flower like this, right, uh, and then copy, copy the flower from life. Um, the thing is that they will quickly flower right out of the water. They will quickly. So I don't know how he did it. <laughs> Maybe he used that camera, I think. The fact is, if you use that camera thing, it's um, um, it takes you forever to do so. It's not like a, it's it's faster. It takes you forever to do so. Right? So so now I'm going to use this cobalt blue, right? This nice cobalt blue. As I wait for this to dry, actually, you know what? No, I'm gonna get the orange and put the orange over over the yellow here, right? So orange. Mm. 
makes a difference. This paper. Yeah, she was right. Hot press, yeah. You're doing the orange now directly over the. Uh, if you have. Yeah. So, if you have if orange, we can use uh, we can use cadmium yellow medium and then cadmium red uh, uh, medium. But you're using cadmium red for the orange? Cadmium, cadmium red and cadmium yellow medium mixed together. You should get, unless you have, unless you have cadmium orange. I have an orange. Oh, then, okay. then so use I that. Yeah, use, use that. It should be okay. okay. should be, should okay. be okay. And just go over the yellow. And go over the yellow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm mixing it. So I'll catch up with you in a second. Right. At first, uh, make an orange that is not super orange, right? You can see there are some areas here, orange is a little bit lighter. And then, uh, um, and then we are going to use darker orange for the darker parts of the petals. So we're gonna have yellow, light orange, and dark orange. And yellow at the bottom. Yeah, that's what I And it has to, we have to, yeah, we have to stop uh, at the bottom, short of mm -hmm. reaching the end of the orange because, on the yellow, because then we need to leave that, that glow, right? That orange glow, the yellow glow. I think it's allergy season for me too, because I'm oh. so spaced out. I got a stiff, sniffly nose or something. All right, here we go, here. So now I'm going to uh, soften up, rinse the brush, and then take off the water and soften up that passage from the orange to the yellow, right, to the white. That orange is brighter, so let's try to get it now a little bit more red in the orange, right? And now try to get those beautiful dark, darker line of orange, right? So you wonder what kind of color he was using for this kind of beautiful bright colors. Right? Yeah, then they, I don't know where they had if they had it. Maybe they did have it, right? All right, we get in there with this. So the the uh, are you having problem with the with the hot press? Is treating you well? I'm liking it a lot. This is my first thing. Yeah, first it's thing. so smooth, right? So smooth. Yeah, and you can lift color. That was our, that other paper and that other flower. It was very tedious. The 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 colors are brighter on uh, on hot press. Because uh, uh, the cold press has uh, the up and down, they create a little bit of sh shadow. See that? Look at the look at the color, this paper with the color of this paper. They're both uh -huh. white, but this looks a little bit grayer. See that? It does. Because it has this little bumps, right? Up and down, they create a little bit of a shadow. Uh, so that's as much wider. It's just a flat, flat, flat color a plate that. Uh, doesn't have any of those little shadows, right? It's much easier to control, I think. When you do small areas, yes. 
But when you have to make a big white sky, it's really hard. It's, it's, hard. it's really hard because you see the brush strokes and um, it's very slick. It doesn't create any texture, right? Sometimes you want the texture, sometimes you want the, the granularity to help you out with the texture. Right? So, hot press doesn't give you any of that. Remember when we tried to do, to do the dragon or the brush to create the pattern, to create texture? on hot press, it's really hard to do that. I grade my student today, my grad student, I feel better. It's, uh, it's always a little bit one of those, you know, things because uh, some grad student, this, some some grad student have, where, uh, have one that had to, to withdraw because it was depressed. And two more, they were depressed too, but I kind of helped them out and they got at the end of the semester. At the, or at the, New York? At the academy in New York. Mm. But PATHA is similar. There's a, this, the undergrad are going through a hard time psychologically. They, I had the undergrad um, taken um, an incomplete uh, and then um, they couldn't, they couldn't finish. They even really they couldn't complete, they just couldn't. They had to deal with the health, you know, mental health thing because of this, this COVID thing has been disrupting everybody's social yeah. life, relationship and parents. And it's, it's one of those things that you don't really know how much, you know, what kind of, effect this this thing can have right and, and and not just being sick in a hospital but psychologically right? <clears throat> yeah i think harriet is seeing a lot of these things when uh, she she tests the student and So I'm gonna darken some areas in here with this a little bit of darker orange, I almost red, just red. Okay, there are some some areas in here that are really darker, right? Uh, I mean, not darker, but uh, uh, red, right? Red, they move quickly toward the red, right? but in some spot, not just everywhere. Right? So, right, so I think it's acceptable. Um, this this uh, approach, this layered approach, right? Seems like we're getting some similar, oh, it shows similar effect, right, to, to the Bowers. And maybe we we'll go back over that later, right, to finish that. So I'm going to start again then, the yellow, right. I'm going to move on to this thing here, right? Ah, just a tiny, tiny little blood in the brush makes that yellow green right away. Set up. So I'm gonna do the same thing. See that here for this, right? For the yeah. yellow. For the next set. Okay. Yeah.
You guys could could frame those uh, work that you did, the ananas, the pineapple. You could frame it. As you've seen that nice pineapple, you could frame it, right? There's, uh... Yeah, my I showed it to my daughter, the one in Hong Kong, and she just said, "Oh, I want that one." <laughs> okay, <So>. right. <laughs> I know. That's nice, right? Yeah. So you can you can also try something similar uh, again with plants that you have in the house. I would take pictures though. Take a photograph. Mm -hmm. And oh, sorry guys, the sun is starting from to come down from the back. I gotta close the curtain. You see the you see the sun here, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you must have another something in your paint, Jerry. <laughs> What's he have? There's another color in his yellow. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Okay. All right. I'm gonna block in the yellow also in these here. Just see what happened, right? These three down here. Oh, that's the blue. Okay, that's blue. Okay. All right. It's interesting to see how uh, I like I like this this stage in here when you see a line drawing, an intermediate stage, and then an almost finished one, right? When you can see the transformation from uh, uh, the conceptualization of the work with lines to gradually the the tonal and, and, and chromatic rendering of the, the subject. So for these details, it's good to have uh, small brushes in Kolinsky Sable uh, because the point of Kolinsky Sable is so smooth and regular and uh, the, the point of uh, the uh, synthetic brushes tend to, uh, when, even when they're small, tend to splay and they don't have the same fine tip, right? Now these, all my brushes are old, right? These are, are sable, but they are old, so they do what they can, but they don't splay. Definitely they don't splay, which is which is a bonus, right? The, the tip is a little bit um, kind of worn out. <coughs> you 
I remember when uh, when dur during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, suddenly all my friends that were smoking Afghan, right? Ashes, Afghan ashes. They were desperate <laughs> because, <laughs> because the, 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 the import of ashes from Afghanistan would just stop, right, overnight. And I wonder with this thing of the of the embargo with Russia, etc., we're not gonna get Kolinsky sable rushes anymore because they come from Russia. The the, the sable come from Russia. So they only they it's the only the, the Russian they have the Kolinsky, at least until recently. Oh. I, I don't know if it when Canadians have them? Huh? When Canadians have them? No, it's a uh, it's a little animal, the Kolinsky. That they it, only in, in uh, Siberia and okay. these cold climates. I think if they had it. I mean, probably they could raise it, but I don't think they have it. They have other um, animals with similar fur, but not the Kolinsky. You can, you can red marten, for example. You can get the red marten and stuff like that, but it's not. I don't. It's. I think it's a different animal. In fact, when they you see in the brushes, some brushes say red marten, right? Um, it will say Kolinsky, yeah. but it's very similar. But I think that the quality, though, it's just different. The smoothness or the spring or whatnot, right? Of the Kolinsky is, is different from uh, the Red Martin. So I want to try to tackle those blue spikes. See what we can do with the blue spikes, right? So I think that blue spikes are going to be uh, cobalt blue. Beautiful blue. So I don't see any, um, you know what? It could also be ultramarine though. But I, I don't see any white in there. I see a lighter area of blue. So I think we can put a light wash of uh, blue everywhere. And maybe kind of lift if we put too much blue lift some areas where we see the highlight like here see that here so we're going to keep it extra lighter here there so you know what i think it's called it's uh, ultramarine okay. yeah i would okay. go with ultramarine white at the tip of the river. yeah that's white right but we're not gonna we're gonna leave it white right we're not gonna put any any white there we just try to kind of try to leave it white because the white of the paper is the brightest white that you can come up with you need to wait until this is drier make sure the lower part i guess i can block it see 
This is like one of those illumination, right, thing with a tiny little miniature. <laughs> with this brush in here, uh, it, you can really get those little details on, on this kind of paper. That's quite, <clears throat> quite, quite refined details, right? So we're going to make another frame here, right? <laughs> Should make other ones again. Should ask something in exchange. Oh, she uh, she's very good. She bought me tickets, you know. <laughs> she kind of kind of negotiate, right? All right, I give it to you. What do you give me, right? Uh, Mom, I'll get you tickets. Okay, fine, good, great. <laughs> no, I got uh, flowers for Mother's Day from both daughters. I mean, one oh, one, and then. Uh, Oh, yeah, but did, did, they, did they paint they the flowers? Because no. did they paint the flowers? They bought them, right? They didn't grow them. You painted this, right? So it's worth it's worth more, right? <laughs> That's right. Good idea. It keeps giving. But I'm, but I'm saying, you know, you just can can get something out of this, right? Is the tip of the blue is yellow, light yellow? Where? The tip of the blue stem, blue thing. This one here? Yeah, the one. Yeah, no, it's kind of yellow? a a kind of a grayish color. Do you oh. do you see yellow? Okay, right. I see a gray. No, I don't know what. I see I a see grayish. My... Huh. I see a grayish color, so like off white. So orange and blue are complementary, so they create this stark contrast, right? So see how I'm trying to draw, and I'm trying to paint this, this blue here uh, as straight as possible right next to the orange petal so that th that create an incredibly sharp division between the the two the two parts of the flower so the blue here defines now one side of the petal here It's very dark in some spots here. Oh, Cynthia, are you? I meant to ask you, are you? Um, Shipping something to 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 Italy? No. no, okay. I don't think I need to ship anything. Yeah, no, because uh, because we just tried with the uh, uh, students bought something, uh -huh. and then ship it to the hotel in Rome, and it arrived. Uh -huh. Eduardo has it, so it was an experiment. So uh -huh. it's now it's there okay. waiting for her. So, okay. but if you don't need to buy anything, because this student needed Ramona, she needed to buy um. She needs to buy an easel and she had to ship there. Uh, and the easel, she bought an easel that was relatively inexpensive. So she said she's going to leave it there. She doesn't, I she see. doesn't care. So I'm that going to find them first. could do so, that. Uh, I mean, kind of, but if you have, have everything, you don't need to do it. So, I mean, I'm going to, I mean, actually, it's a good idea because I'm going to London first. Well, that's the so, thing. Uh, so you could have it shipped. I mean, you could buy it. If you can buy an easel for yeah. like 50 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, 50 bucks, then. When you're done, you leave it there. That's right. Or you take it back, but you don't have to carry it around London. Yeah. Not only that, I'm going to London and then 
to see you, then I'm going to doorstep back to England and then going to Mallorca. But then, then unless you want to paint in all the places, you might want to leave the easel. Why don't I get one when we get to Florence? Is that too much or I'll just get one? I mean, you could buy one with Amazon and then have it shipped there. Oh, okay, yes. Buy yes. with Amazon Italy and then you have a ship there. If you want, I can tell Eduardo to, to contact you to tell you, to tell you how he did it, right? Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, I'll just do that. Because uh, <laughs> don't think I'll carry everything around. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's going to be a lot yeah. of stuff, right? So I wanted to see, hmm. I wonder if we can block this in now, right? This part in here. So in this case in here, this is the yellow part, right? But I would not put yellow here. Because that's really blue and green and and we don't want any yellow there, right? Uh, but you see the little strokes in there? You see the little strokes, right? Mm -hmm. That's a dry brush. Remember the dry brush when we did we practice it uh -huh. a little bit? See that? Yeah. All those little brush strokes like that, right? So what I would do, I would block in the yellow, pale yellow, very pale yellow, right? In the area where we see here, try to create a soft pass, soft margin here, right? Between the yellow and the green. Um, and then put the red, and then we go with the green and the blue over it. So, shall we try that? Yes. Okay. okay, so yellow. That's a failure. Red and yellow kill the fellow, right? Is that it? Very light yellow. So. So my water is bluish, it gets, it mixed in the yellow, gives it a kind of greenish cast here. So I need to change the water, I'll I'll be back. If you need okay. to change the water, you want to take 10 minutes to change the water or something? Okay, right. fine. Sure, great. So 7, 720, we'll be back, right? Okay. Hello, Jeanette. And Marie, how are you doing? I'm fine. Good. Can you hear me? Can you hear my voice? Yes, I can. Okay. Because it's slow. It seems like um, I don't talk much lately. No, I don't I don't talk while. I can't talk while I'm painting. I don't know why. I guess I'm just not good enough. Nah. You're not used to it yet.
Are you reading some of those cookies, Mother? No, I'm eating a graham cracker. I had to make more cookies. <laughs> oh, good. They were so good. I know they were good. Which ones were they? They were the chocolate chip with the oatmeal. Uh, oatmeal. oatmeal chocolate chip. I had to go. I'll make some more. Oh, good. good. Too bad I can't get any. <laughs> oh, <laughs> too bad. Are you, yeah. you know, your trip, your, yeah. trip to, your trip to Europe sounds wonderful. Yeah, my daughters, I have two daughters, they uh, they used to live, well, one used to live in Hong Kong, or they both were in Hong Kong, and the one got fed up, moved back to London, so I'm going to see the one in London, and the one, the other one is going to meet us there, too. <laughs> they have to travel. Where does the other daughter live, then? One lives in London, and one lives where? Hong Kong. Hong, oh, she's in Hong Kong, yeah. okay. So, so they got fed up because they locked up for two years, kind of, you know, so they're going crazy. Oh, <laughs> the one in Hong Kong, uh, her husband's from UK, so they're going to London first, and I meet them, her there, and then they see in France, I go to Florence, and I meet them, we're going to Dorset, then they off to Switzerland and France. And they're going crazy, I tell you. <laughs> now, what time of year? What what time of year you're doing this? July, June, July, July. Okay. Yeah, well, I was a kid's uh, school, you know. So yeah, yeah. summer vacation. High season, right? Okay, guys. So um, we gotta go with you're the with the yellow here, right? So remember, I would go with a yellow here, like this here, this color here. This cheek here and the top, mm. and then go over it with the. It's actually it's not. This is this is a little in crimson, right? You see how this is a cooler red. But there is an orange glow here, so it's gonna be yellow, pale yellow, right? Orange, okay. and the little in crimson. Okay, all right. Okay, so pale yellow. Yeah, yeah. On this top here, just the top right here. That looks like lemon yellow. Yeah. It does. Yeah, it yeah. does. It does, but it's not. I guess it's because it's so light. Ah, okay. Uh, because see that it is darker, and that is has a little bit of or of red, kind of red in it, it makes it more orange. Yeah. But it does look like lemon yellow. Huh, it's interesting. <clears throat> so we're gonna try now with the, a little bit of orange in the cheek here and the back of the neck. Now we're putting an orange. Yeah, it's a little bit of orange. See that here? Okay. Okay, because you see that area there? Mm-hmm. Kind of with just an orangey glow. And the neck, your throat, and neck. We'll also go to the top of this thing here, the top of the of the bud that open. And um <clears throat> Soften up the transitions. See that transition here? Yeah. 
but so so um general now you do you have free access to all the museums now that you work for museums or or no they 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 don't give you any discount where is that i'm sorry no i'm Not saying yeah you, i when i because i work for a I worked for a museum, for a Newark museum years ago. I got uh -huh. this, this card uh, that uh, let me in all the museums for free. Um, yeah, I volunteer for the Smithsonian. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I have a badge that I can go to some, some museums. Oh, some museums. Like I can go to Mad Free, and they're very sweet to me. They say, oh, you're fellow workers. Um, with me, I went to Whitney, it was free. Well, Smithsonian is free for everybody. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, so yeah, that's true. wonderful to live, live in Washington. Okay. Because uh, I also have the, the PAFA, the PAFA card, right? That, um, the PAFA is also a museum, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. usually they let, they let me in most museum, but years ago I went to the cloisters in, uh, you know, the, did you ever go to the cloisters? Just beautiful, right? Beautiful. So I, I go in and I show the card that, you know, and, and, and the lady says, what is that? Is it PAFA? Is it the first museum in the United States? Oh, okay. <laughs> this is really, but there's a lot of people that don't know PAFA. Even, even, I was surprised somebody works in a museum doesn't know PAFA, doesn't know. It's not like... Yeah, it does not do a very good job of marketing. Yeah, that's true. That's true. If you belong, like, like um, we belong to the Philadelphia Museum of Art, you get free admission to most other museums. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. I didn't know if that. If you're a member. But theoretically speaking, you could go in into the, the, in the Met without paying or paying just a dollar if you want to, right? Yes, yes, yes. And we can pay whatever you like. But nobody does it because you feel like you're cheap. I do. I, pay, I give them 25 cents. The reason... Of the and donate $20. <laughs> do, they, do they look you funny? Do they look you funny or... No. Even care if they do. I, I couldn't care less. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that charity supper. <laughs> they're a multi they're a multi billion dollar institution. Yeah, they are. They are. They certainly don't need my hard earned money. Right. They are right. Yes, I usually tell them I'm retired on the fixed income. <laughs> oh that's good. That works. <laughs> I love the fixing them. <laughs> well, you shouldn't do that because then it sounds like, <clears throat> you know, you sort of a little feel guilty if you had more money to <laughs> give it to them. You live in California, right, Cynthia? Oh, no, Washington, D.C. Ah, D.C. Okay. That's why I, I volunteer in the Smithsonian. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, you have access to beautiful museums. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Those are beautiful museums, hey. I, I'm, I'm twisting the neck. I'm bending the neck of my head a little bit because it was not bent enough, right? Uh, to me, it's the height of. Uh, uh, I don't know what it is the height of, but. They have billionaires on their boards, but they want to get twenty dollars from the tourists coming through. Yeah, yeah, I know. But Harvard is the same thing. Harvard and they they have an endowment bigger than God, but they still want oh. the tuition, right? They yeah. could they could let in everybody in for free. I mean, they have the biggest endowment, really. I mean, it's like thirty-two yeah. billion or something like that, right? Thirty-two billion is it? Mm -hmm. Yep. 36, 32. So now I was thinking, let's start with the stem here. It's it's a kind of a cool, I, it looks like it's a viridian green, right? Mm. It's a viridian green. And uh, I'm gonna try with that, try to with the viridian. If the viridian is not, uh, um, 
cool enough, we can add some ultramarine to that. So Maria, sorry you can't you can make it for but I, I just have all this schedule um, for the drawing session, right? The I know I just have a hectic couple of months coming up. I I would love to go to drawing. I love drawing classes. But yeah, I, ju I just can't make it. Like, yeah, no. I just have. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that you know, like it's um, it's good for some and not good for some. Then schedule changes, yeah. and uh, I'll I'll keep offering though because that is. Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Yes, I'm bound to be able to, but I have commitments on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh huh. Yeah, I'll just uh, um, you know, especially with the summer, then people start traveling and uh, it becomes well, difficult. The shore the, we're at the shore in the summer. Oh, you're at the shore. Okay. Yeah. We would like you to come there to teach. Yes. <laughs> We're trying to get Jerry to get the Ocean City Arts Center to have you come and teach. Ocean Ocean City. Oh, okay. Ocean City in Maryland. No. no, no, this is New Jersey. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, oh, okay. It's not the Maryland Ocean City. No, no. Joyce City. Yeah, this is Ocean City, New Jersey. You know, okay. I, sus I suspect that there is a very light veil of blue there, right? So I'm going to try to put a very, very light veil of blue and then the green on top. See yeah. what happens, right? So, so it's a greeny blue, isn't it? Yeah. You see, they got, it's got the bluish, right? Bluish card. Yeah, yeah. This is blue you're putting in? Yeah, this is blue, uh, ultramarine blue, with a tiny, tiny little bit of viridian, tiny little bit, mostly blue, because okay. it creates that kind of glow, icy glow, right? See that? Uh, mm. mostly, mostly which blue, though, was it? It's mostly blue, yeah. mostly blue, with a tiny, tiny little bit of, of, of viridian. Okay. Oh, okay. It seems to be working. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it also under here, under the, the lower part of this, this bud here, right? So I don't know if I told you this story about the blue, the blue worm, right? But I'm gonna tell you if if I if you if, if you already heard it, stop me, right? So years ago, I did this uh, illustration for Scientific American about a parasitic hornworm, right? Uh, actually, not parasitic, parasitic wasps that attacks the hornworm. So, so now I'm gonna do the same thing. A blue here with a tiny, tiny little bit of of uh, viridian here, right? Like that. So, um, these were the golden years of illustration Scientific American where we had to do a lot of research, going around museum, meet scientists, etc. So, um, I'm in contact with this group of scientists that were studying this parasitic symbiosis, right? The symbiosis between a wasp, a virus, and the tobacco hornworm. So they give me this um, tobacco hormone to copy. They send me in the mail a box with five or six live tobacco hormone, right? And then I start copying them. Uh, and some of them, they, they were infected. They were be, they've been um, um, bitten by the wasp that, so with this, it's, you know those tiny, tiny little black wasps that you might see sometime in the garden, etc. So what they do, they, they have this symbiotic relationship with the, with the virus that uh, uh, they get along. The wasp and the other get along, right? Uh, what they do, the, 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 the wasp stings, stings the, uh, the tobacco hormone and paralyzes it. And um, um, after a while, it, it remains alive, right? After a while, the, you have this little worms coming out the larvae the larvae coming out from the inside of the tobacco hormone they've been feeding on 
and then you have this little cocoon. So now you have this tobacco hormone with this little white cocoon sticking out, covered with white cocoons. Inside, inside is the larva that is the virus that is now being propagated by the new generation of. So I had all these these tobacco hormones somewhere not infected, somewhere kind of being hit by this parasitic wasp. Some had this little cocoon sticking out, some had the debris open, so all the stages, right? So I look at this tobacco hormone and say, why it's so green, almost blue. And I was looking at all the images I could find in books and they were green, but not blue, right? Um, very, very pale blue, very, very silvery pale blue, the one that I had, right? And I had to keep it in the fridge. Angie was not happy. <laughs> because you have to, <laughs> this tobacco, nasty tobacco hormones. In it. So, so I, I, I copy exactly the color I see. Like it was a color like this, right? Very kind of bluish, light pale blue, right? And I copy, copy, and then, you know, came out nice. This, this tobacco hormone in, uh, in, um, uh, on a plant of tomatoes, which I copied from my tomatoes. I was growing the tomatoes, right? So the last day, when it was almost done, and I had to turn in the, the word the next day, I go in the backyard to check my tomatoes, and guess what was in the tomatoes? A big, fat, juicy tobacco hornworm, right? Eating my leaves, right? And um, it was it was green, it was not blue. And I said, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I trusted so and then I called the guy the scientist said what's going on here yeah because when I was looking at the picture from the various books and images online and books they had the colors different from the tobacco hormone I had at home but I said you know what I had the real thing I trust the real thing right so it turns out the, the scientist told me oh yeah no they are different color because the, we feed them this tofu that we gave you and it is no chlorophyll. I said, oh, you could have told me, right? But to the scientist, that was not important. That was not important, the color. It was important, the whole. So quickly, I had to put glazes of green over the tobacco hormone. And you know what? It came out really, really nice because the tobacco, tobacco hormone had that kind of translucency coming from the blue underneath. When it put the, the warmer green on top, it was just perfect. Luckily, but that was just a lucky thing. So in here, see what we're doing. That's why it came, it came to my, my tobacco hormone, right? Because that area here is bluish. But then we put this green over here, see that? Now it's a slightly warmer green, like a hooker green on the side here. Tobacco hormone. We use that? Hmm? Sap green? Sap, I would use a, a hooker's green or sap green, right? Sap, yeah. I'm trying to find a mix of hookers and sap green. Let me see. Yeah, this is a sap and hooker green. See what happened, we put it here because we already have a bluish color here, right? No, it's too, too, not, too much, too much, all right. Um, hooker green. You don't have hookers green? Not on this palette. Um, um, so try, try. What green do you have? I have a uh, early sap and uh, gradient. Try perylene, see if, see if it see if works a little bit. If not, you can adjust it with temp, uh, adjust the temperature with uh, the other greens that you have. Three green. It's very green. Perling green, sap green, and green. Uh, try, try with perling to see what happens. But try test it on a piece of paper first, separately, to see if you can, if, if it was very green, like green, um, uh, cool, warm, neutral. Looks to me to be cool. Cool. 
Because that is a, um, then, hmm, then try to mix a little bit of sap green to that petaline green, see what happens. All right. Okay. Sap and petaline. Sometimes when we do this kind of uh, distance yeah. discussion, right? It, it may, uh, you know those movies where, where somebody get hurt and they call the doctor and the doctor say, okay, cut here and then you see a red, red thing, that's just spleen. Then you put... The people are stuck, stuck in a mountain, right? And then somebody gets hurt and... <laughs> Very green. It looks, it looks good. So see what I'm doing um, uh, here, Gerald. See that there's a green in here between the dark, dark green and the and the blue green. This intermediate. So I'm looking for that little narrow band, the band in here. Then I'm gonna put the darker green here. But uh, in this case in here, I might need to go over here with the uh, dry brush later, right? So now I'm gonna create an area here that is slightly wider, green, but then later we're gonna get over it with uh, a with dry brush to create a transition. Listen, if it's not the same green, don't worry about that. Right? But I'm saying that there's a base of cool green, then you move on to a neutral, a kind of yellow more yellowish green uh and then a darker green that is almost you know probably got some black and it's blue or blue and green and that's very dark right are you talking about uh, color yeah 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 see this one here that there that's see that See how dark that is, right? So I'm saying there is a, a green here, which is very blue, a blue, bluish green, right? Very bluish green, silvery. Then there is an intermediate band in here. See that is band in here. That is a slightly warmer. I see a yellowish cast just here, right? And then, and then next to it is a darker color, which probably goes, uh, probably is green and blue and black maybe, right? But definitely green and blue, so. Now we're gonna to try to block in that darker color. If I need to warm this up here, what we can do, we can get a little bit of um, yellow green and then paint that over it with a dry brush. So that is so dark. So again, I mixed the um, I mixed the viridian with uh, indigo. See if that indigo. is sufficient. Yeah, I want to see if that's sufficient. Oh. Then we can create a transition layer in between, right? With a with a dry brush. I mean, we can smooth the passage now, right? But if there's need, there's the need for more transition. We can lock it in later with okay. the dry brush. It's, it's a deep brush. I don't want it to start sweeping out, Jenny. It's similar to what? It's like I'm familiar with it. Oh. Huh. Just to get the sense of turning, right? Sense of volume. And then here and there we have these little discoloration or these two we don't need to uh, achieve that the softness right away we can block in an area of color here uh, and then smooth it later with uh, the dry brush create create a smoother transition with a dry brush So guys, is are these passages clear? Right, how we look at the 
how we look at the plants and how we or, or the subject in general right and we try to replicate the steps right going from the lightest color to the darkest color the dominant or the base right So now up here, I'm going to soften up this right, area here, and then I'm going to put the blue. In in my image, it looks like that blue has got a violet cast too, blue-violet, right? Do, does it look like to yeah. you too? Yes. Yeah. Right? But blue-violet. So I would say we can put ultramarine there with uh, a little bit of alizarin crimson. Ultramarine, right? And a lizard and crimson. Wait to to red, some more ultramarine. I was watching this this thing more more, more out of fascination fascination with the horror, right? About uh, you know how sometimes there's something so stupid or horrible that you can't look away, right? I was watching the History Channel. And um, they were saying that, you know, Giordano Bruno had this idea of um, this this cosmic God, more than a God that is uh, the, old, the old God of the Old Testament, right? The cosmic God, or etc. A more advanced idea of the divinity, which is, could be, have some affinity with a, a more lay approach to the divinity, right? And uh, he, as you know, Giordano Bruno was, was eventually... Um, in prison and then burned at the stake and and uh, when um, Campo dei Fiori. Uh, Piazza Campo dei Fiori. Fiori. exactly and when uh, when um, there's the statue there to Giordano Bruno that statue was put there uh, by the newborn Italian government as soon as they took over the Vatican <laughs> They conquered the Vatican. They put the statue of Giordano Bruno there. I just say. So, but they, what they were saying, these people on on the on History Channel, right? They were saying that um, Giordano Bruno was in contact with the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and yeah, these people seeing this thing with a straight face, right? And I'm thinking, no wonder people stormed the White House, right? Uh, because they believe all this junk, right? That that somebody feeds them on uh, on TV, and so now the, the Vatican knew of the aliens, right? And he was trying to Vatican, the Vatican, the Vatican, where, where they were trying to prevent people to know about these aliens, because they would have been now contrary to what the Vatican is saying about God and this and that. And I was just thinking, what the heck? <laughs> what is this? Who's coming up? But it's it's so, of course, they always say, if then that is true, right? A kind of disclaimer. But people that listen to the stuff, they don't pay attention to this kind of very subtle, sneaky way of saying this is all false, right? But they present the rest as if it were this truth of the aliens being uh, kind of what. So if let's say if that is true, right? If the Vatican tried to uh, prevent Giordano Bruno by telling the people about the, the aliens, why didn't the alien zap the Vatican, right? Because they are this great 
civilization, they could do that. They could just send send down a Terminator or um, one of those guys, right? And then zap the Vatican, but never did that. So why didn't they do that? So I don't know. But this is this is what, what makes me crack up is that this is called the History Channel. It's called what? The History Channel. History Channel. Do you ever see the history, history channel? channel. They, no, history channel. <laughs> they that's they call it, they have even the guts to call themselves a history channel, right? I know. Cynthia, we lost you. Are you back? Cynthia, you back? Oh, no. So I wanna do now what I wanna do, I wanna block in that. Uh, Alizarin Crimson here, right? And then we can start with a uh, uh, with a um, dry brush, right? So very light Alizarin Crimson at first, but they have these people that say um, they 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 call themselves PhD and this and that, and they teach in in colleges, and they have these these theories about. Aliens, it makes me wonder, right? Okay, let's start with this. They say PhD, PhD of what? Alienology? Oh, you're a little cynical. PhD, actually one was a... Um, PhD in uh, fol folkloristic studies, something like that. So I guess that alien has become folklore. Eh? The alien, the alien theory that become folklore. It's and Crimson, right? Yeah. Alizarin Crimson, yeah. I got, see, very light first, right? Very light, right? Because see how there's a, an area here that is very, you can see the yellow kind of showing yes. through, see that? Well, yeah. you know, Rebecca, it's all about how you can, how you see the world. When yes. I first was living, living, living in Italy, I heard an ambulance and I ran to my window to see what it was. And all these men in black jumped out of the ambulance. This is in Florence. And I thought, why are they wearing black if they're coming to help somebody? It looked like they were coming to pick up a dead body. And I asked later about it, and they said, well, they wear, this is 1963. Uh -huh. They wear medieval uniforms. And the medieval they wear what? Time, medieval uniforms. Oh. In the, in the nineteen in the 1960s, they were still wearing them, and uh, uh, that's why it, they were wearing black. Huh. I was not aware of that. It was Florence. Florence. Huh. That's that's ambulance. from an ambulance, right? Yeah. Huh. I think that that's a regional thing because we never had those guys in black. Uh, you sure you were not the police going to clobber somebody's head? <laughs> no, it was an ambulance. They had a, a croce rosso on the uh, uh -huh. on it. Wow, I didn't know that. I, I mean, you know, it's just a flourish in our region, so maybe they had uh, they had a different uniform. Who knows? Well, that was the 60s. So the 60s, right? Early 60s. Okay. So now, see what I'm doing. I'm uh, going over here with uh, a little bit. I mean, let me try to enlarge this. If we can enlarge this, right? Um, try. I want to try to get that uh, that gradation. See that slightly darker here, right? But the margin are very soft. So I'm going to start from that. Actually, I'm going to take off the pencil if I can. So before you erase, make sure that your drawing is 
your painting is dry, right? So now we're gonna try to get that uh, um, dry brush here, right? So do you want to see one more time the dry, dry brush, how to do it? Yes. All right. So um, this is the, the paint I'm using, right? And this is the brush, right? So now with the brush, you load the brush like this, and then what you do, take off some paint, but just rubbing it on the palette like this, right? Then what you do, you try on a piece of paper. If it's uh, if it's uh, too much, if it's just right, right? You don't want the brush to be super full with paint because it doesn't have to flow out. It has to be be kind of rubbed out a little bit, right? So kind of put you rub it against the against the, the paper, but if you put down the brush, it doesn't have to flow out. It just had to convince it to exit, right, the, the brush. So now you do this, try to do this, see that? Many tiny brush strokes, one next to the other one, to make a an even parallel wash, see that? So in theory, you, you're not going to see the lines between the brush strokes. And then you can go over it fairly quickly because uh, because um, um, it dries quickly. There's not much water, right? Is that is that clear, uh, Marie? Yes. Right? Yes. Let's take a little bit of tr a, a try and try try to do this on a separate piece of paper, right? Before you go on on the final work. So what I'm gonna start, you're gonna start to draw the upper margin of this darker, right? Here, see that? This darker part in here. And then I'm gonna create a transition later as a, a transition going to the to the right here, below this line here, with a slightly lighter, um, well, less, less uh, concentrated pigment. Sincerely, I thought I thought it was gonna be faster, faster, but um, because they these red petals were relatively fast to do, but now this part of the flower is slowing down the whole process. But you know, and what I'm trying to do now, I'm trying to block in all the various parts that, uh, uh, for example, petals. We just need to do a few, because then you can. You can work on the other, other petals on your own once you see how to do it, right? But now we need to kind of figure this out because this is very tricky, right? So this part in here, see that? This part in here has um, a lot of little tiny brush strokes that we can um, apply here and try to create this gradation, right? The gradation that goes from uh, the darker color here to the gradually lighter color. So here I have already a glow that helps me with that. And uh, now I'm gonna apply darker color here in in this this area here, let's say, right with tiny tiny little brush strokes. And then be be careful with the transition. And we can layer the color here, right? We can layer it. How's it going with the with this technique? So we have to do the same thing with the blue here. See that the blue here has the area that is soft. The edge is soft, so we're gonna we have to resolve it. We gotta soften it up with these little brush strokes.
So now I'm getting a little bit more diluted pigment, right, area, uh, color here. Uh, meaning, not diluted, but more, yeah, more diluted, less less pigment in, in the wash, right? And try to create a transitional area between the darker value here and the lighter value here, and then the yellow. So one, two, three, right? See, they're gonna get rid of that sharp line of division. See how you get this darker a little bit at a time, right? It's almost, you almost don't see it. But it does get darker. So that clearly needs to be even darker. So we're gonna put uh, more, let's see, a laser and crimson and, um, well, it's gonna try try just with a laser and crimson, but more concentration of pigment. And then go over that, right? Look how, see how the paint, how really thick it is, right? See that? So dry brush is very useful for for botanical, right? Or even for portrait when you do a highly de uh, defined portrait. But animals, botanical, this is a technique that I, you know, I just use forever. And you see how important to hit it is this point to have a very good little brush. This is a Kolinsky, very thin, it's probably number one. I don't even know if number one or number zero. I think number one. Um, but the Kolinsky brush, they never splay. They never fray the tip. So even if they maybe get uh, the tip that gets less, sh less sharp, you still have a good control of the brush. And when it, the brush is so small, doesn't really matter much if the tip is a little bit, a little bit dull. So now here we have this wavy, wavy pattern here, right? where you have some spot where it's darker and then a little bit larger. See darker the tip here, a little bit darker here, and darker here, and darker here. You might have to mix some, some blue or violet in with the red because it's getting so dark in certain spots. So in this area here we might we might need a little bit of violet to transition from the red to the blue, right? So we're gonna mix a little bit of ultramarine but do you do you have ultramarine violet? If not, 
We use that. That could be good. If oh, no, 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 no. No, then use just uh, a lizard and crimson and ultramarine blue and make a, a violet like this, right? The ultramarine blue and a lizard and crimson. Then what we're going to do, we're going to try to create, see this area here? It looks like it's slightly darker violet blue, right? Let's try to do that. Right. Okay, yeah. It's working on this. So you're doing dry brush again, right? Yes, dry brush, right? Okay. Because what I want to do, I mean, we could do we could do do, do this first. So you could do here, stay away from this line here, right? Don't go too close to the to the margin between the blue and the yellow. But here, right? Could do this here, right? To save some time see that but i wouldn't push it too much because uh, then uh, you don't want to go too close to that because that on the left we need to create a transition and here to a transition right so we're going to soften up the margin here and then we can we can push the color push the the, the value more with the with the dry brush I think I'm becoming, you know, when you got allergic to the cat's um, hair, right? Oh, uh, yeah. I think I'm getting yeah. becoming allergic to my own hair because I cut my hair and then suddenly I felt all this kind of stiffle. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, right? <laughs> So dry brush here, right? And you see how in some areas he just leaves the light, the light background, the light first wash. See that here? It's the same value here. So um, I'm gonna try to block that in now with the ultramarine blue and a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of lizard and crimson. So same thing for when you get to the green, we're gonna have a, a passage between the green and blue. Try to create this, this very controlled transition. So one thing you do a transition like this, let's say in the sky, right? Um, one thing is doing it in small spaces where within this little inch of width, we have so many little transitions. It's much more difficult. That's when the, that's when the, the dry brush becomes very useful. Well, you can use it also for the sky, yeah. Not, I mean, that doesn't have to be used only for for small areas. But of course, when you start start doing this on the sky, it's it's gonna be quite laborious. Actually, I have a painting I did like that. Let me see if I can find it.
what I'll show you because you're going to see the, the tiny little brush stroke I patiently put in there. But I don't know if I can find it. Let me see the other one. No, I don't know what it is. Sorry. But, um, but these works are done like that. See that? You know, I did this series of whales for this. See, see, let me see if I can enlarge them, right? This is the same technique. You see the tiny little brush strokes? See that? Yeah. See that? So with this technique, you really can get a lot to, you see that, all that, right? A lot of super tiny, tiny details uh, here, right? See, all this part here is first this glow here, right? Looks just bluish, right? And then on top of that, I build up, I build up all of that darker, darker, darker volume. So in, in here, it's kind of easier in the sense that it's kind of monochromatic, but see that, that is the base wash. And on top of that, I build gradually, gradually the transition here like this. This is not the sky I wanted to show you, but I can't find it, so. So anyway, it's it's a great technique for uh, for highly detailed works, basically. So we don't want to um, go over or go. You know, to 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 paint those those wheels like that. After a while, it. Um, it it, it seems like it took forever, but it really didn't. In the sense that after a while, you get very good at this. You get very quick, very quick at at evaluating the the concentration of the paint, uh, blocking in these little tiny little mark very quickly, fairly quickly, because you do it thousands of times in a relatively small amount of time. So you pick it up very quickly. <clears throat> <clears throat> and a technique that is also good for fixing mistakes. If sometimes you make a mistake in a watercolor that maybe is a, a little bit looser, like right? a little bit uh, softer, uh, and um, I mean more painterly, right? Um, then you have to, I don't know, uh, you have it in an area that's not to your to your liking. You just can intervene with this by putting the color exactly where you want them. Almost like mending it, mending your mending your painting, right? Do you guys hear about the uh, the NFT craze? that is going on today with the art and an NFT. No, what's that? NFT. NFTs basically is, is another pyramid scheme, right? Um, so what they do is, um, it, it's, I think it's a spawn of the um, Bitcoins and all this stuff, the digital currency, right? So NFT, um, an artist, just for art, NFT is for art, right? I don't know what NFT stands for, but so um, an artist sells the digital, the right, what well, sells a digital image. So, for example, I have a digital image of one of those whales, right? I sell the digital image, so I don't give, I don't give my real image, the true image to that person. I just give them the, the digital image. But with that, um, the rights 
So it becomes there to use as they want, as they like. So the idea of this is that uh, people that buy that, right, um, can sell it whichever way they want, but they, that image becomes somehow a form of currency, meaning, and this applies only to, to famous artists, right? So if, uh, um, you know, a very famous artist sells the digital rights to, to his works, then that becomes a currency, meaning I buy it and then maybe in three months, I say, hey, I'm selling the digital rights to the work, this work of uh, Damien Hurst. And uh, another person buys it paying, I don't know, double what I paid. So in theory, the person that buys, buys it first, then makes a profit, right? Second person that buys it does the same thing, try to keep it for a while and then they sell it. So the, the, the point is to sell it and make a profit. So it's it's like a pyramid scheme in the sense that the price will only goes up, right? Goes up, goes up, goes up until the thing costs so much and people realize that it's crazy and they don't buy it anymore. And the person that uh, is uh, the last one to buy it and doesn't sell it is the one that loses all the money, right? But apparently it's, it's something that is... I know it's a difficult. I, it took me a while to understand and tell you the truth. I'm not sure this is exactly how it works, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, it's this kind of digital craze that is going on. If you think about this, what they're trying to do. So, so the, this is the other thing. So, is that the people that you you cannot really say I, I have an, a a digital image, I want to sell it. No, you have to go through this kind of NFT people, right? And um, what they do when you sell, they charge you a commission. So you, the artist gets a fee, right? Uh, gets a gets an amount of money, and then uh, um, he has to pay a fee to the people that, that do this transition. And then it's it. You don't if if your if your artwork increases value, they say a thousand times, you don't get anything. The money is made by the people that do the transaction back and forth, by selling and buying, selling and buying. So, um, it's, it's, it's crazy, right? It's crazy, right? But but that's the way it is. So my kids tell me that now the NFT are crashing and I'm not surprised at all, right? But, um, but um, it came to my mind a joke that uh, a friend of mine told me years ago, right? Um, and these two friends, right, that visit each other, and um, one day, one of these two friends sees on the wall of the friend that is visiting this beautiful painting. And he says, oh, wow, that's a beautiful painting. Oh, yeah, it's been in the family for generations, just I like it so much, you know, I look at it, it makes me happy. He says, you listen, but it's really, really beautiful. Can I buy it? He says, no, I mean, you know, I just love it. It's been with me for like hundred, you know, my family, hundred fifty years. So, so this guy convinced him to sell it, right? So, he, this this guy buys it for you know two thousand right? dollars. But the very next day, the guy that that sold it is really missing his paintings. Oh, that was stupid. And I was so he goes back to his friends and and buys back. And so. To make a long sh sh story short, you know, they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, buying and selling to each other until the painting now is worth twenty thousand dollars, right? So one day, one of the two guys goes back to the friend to buy back the painting that just sold to this guy, right, to his friend, right? And uh, he says, oh, I'm, "I'm here to I'm here to buy the painting back." And the other guy says, "Well, sorry, I sold it." He says, "What?" Yeah, I sold it to this other friend of mine that came and visit me, right? And um, and this other guy says, "You're so stupid. We were doing so much money, me and you together." <laughs> <laughs> that's right. so, but that's the concept of the NFT, right? Uh, it, I mean, this is an old joke, right? Uh, it's uh, um, a, a Jewish stand-up comic, a friend of a friend. Uh, Moni Ovadia, Italia, Moni Ovadia, that he has this, this, 
<laughs> it's very, very funny jokes, right? And, um, yeah, I mean, it seems like this. Then the guy now that put all that money, buying and buying and back, buying and back, lost all this money because he cannot <laughs> buy it and sell it anymore, right? I think that that's what basically the concept of so many things today where everything is a service, right? Service, service fee, right? Convenience mm -hmm. fee. So how is this kind of layering coming? It's coming. It's coming? It's okay. It could take a while to finish this. Yeah, I was thinking we play it with this <laughs> a little bit, right? Uh, but then I would stop and I would try work on other parts of the flower. It's just uh, what I wanted to do. I'm going to show you. I do want to show you how just see these areas in here that were kind of flat first, right? At a sharp margin. We can soften the margin, right? Now, what I want to do, I want to go down below here to block in that dark line that you see here. See how dark that is, right? Yeah. So dark that, very dark blue. And blue green, right? Blue green. So I, I'm gonna use that. Look at how that is. It's a blue and dark, uh, dark blue and dark green. That should should, should do it. Right? <clears throat> I think it's the the greed of you know wanting to become rich fast that makes people do this kind of stuff. So we're gonna darken that lower portion here of this pod, of this uh, bud. But in a sense, I was thinking about the aliens before also because uh, in a sense, when these people were traveling, right, in um, remote places, just, you know, never discovered, newly discovered, they will come in contact with these strange animals or strange creatures, strange plants. And um, imagine when these plants would arrive at the gardens, the Kew Gardens, right, and yeah. they would be in kind of, you know, cultivated there for the first time, trying to try to see what they could be good for, or simply just sold as flowers, or because a lot of these plants were not really used for good for commercial uses, but more it was more a prestige, right, of, of, of discovering what um, in the in this case England's new conquer land had, right. So you see the, uh, the the little lines in here that I'm blocking in, they're not super, super precise, like you, you might have seen in the in the whale, but uh, because I simply want to kind of move a little bit faster, right? You could spend a little bit more time with these, uh, this work in here, um, blocking in all these little uh, brush strokes to create a more, gradual soft transition right and sometimes you can darken an area by simply going over it twice with the same color right because again this color being so dry uh dries up quickly there's not a lot of not a lot of water in it so you can uh, go over an area and it takes you a minute. By the time you go back like a typewriter, start again on the other side, it's dry, it's already dry. It's not like a, the regular wash of watercolor that takes a while to, 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 to dry up. This is very thin. You almost see it um, changing from shiny to, 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 to opaque, or to duller, right, as you paint. You see, you see this bump up and down like that, right? See this bump up and down like that, meaning I'm trying to create that gradation um, by mm -hmm. um, varying the 
the value some area darker some area lighter So this is all green, right? And that, uh, so this is a technique also good to create that kind of sheen reflection. See the kind of sheen that's developing here. If you had more time to increase the contrast, right? Increase the contrast uh, and, and the chroma, that sheen will come out really nice. Mm -hmm. I want to find a little animal, this near discover animal for next next week. Um, because I was looking at a parrot. The parrot is gonna take us a month to do. <laughs> oh yeah, yes. Yeah, the parrot. It's beautiful, right? It's beautiful, but very beautiful. Beautiful, but it's gonna take us a month to do, and I don't think it's you know, it's gonna be good. Yeah. For us it's going to be too tedious so i want to see if i can find a uh like a one of those animals that were discovered like a koala or a or a or a, or a kangaroo or a gecko or something that that this guy these explorers were were finding right something from the galapagos or something from it's finch, right? One of Darwin's finches. So again, we don't we don't have the same level of refined refined passage as in the Bowers drawing, but simply because I don't want to spend too much time on it. So one thing, one more passage here, and then and then maybe we we, we switch, right? Um, so here, see that in this area is in here, right? This area is in here. We can go back with a slightly darker value, but but leaving the periphery of that of that uh, this area green visible, and in here, so we have blue here, green here, and darker blue green here. So we can mm -hmm. narrow gradually. We narrow the band of value. Your, your dry brush is just so amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you do you, you like it. I'm glad you like it because uh, <laughs> I just do because it, it's, it can be it can be <laughs> tedious, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whenever whenever I, I teach, think it takes a lot of practice. <laughs> whenever I teach the, this technique, I kind of brace myself, waiting for <laughs> people say, "Dad, ah, this is too boring." But it's uh, it's very important. It it really helps you to. You can use it in uh, again in, in in landscape in anything like right? when you need de need to do detail right. And you, the wash you can start with very delicate wash and then gradually darken it. So for example, this area transition here is a nice area transition. You see how soft that is. That's all dry brush, right? If you, if you enlarge that image, you see the tiny little brush strokes there. So let's try to do that. I try to transition. You want this just barely visible as value, right? And this what I was saying is you mend it, right? You mend that, the sense that you take off that sharp edge. The sharp edge that, see that? See how soft it is compared to that, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Right. It doesn't look like when you're doing it, it doesn't look like it. Then you compare with area that's not finished yet. Say, oh wow. Oh, no, I see it. I call it mending, but I don't know, maybe it's a different term, but I I like the idea of mending it because it, when you kind of try to try to kind of fix a hole in a in a in a sweater, right? They don't do that anymore. People go yeah. buy a new sweater now, right? But um <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I thought that's called darning. 
Darling, darling, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, oh, that's why. Right. That's, that's socks, Jerry. Okay. Socks, Jerry. Darling, right, yeah. darling, yeah, yeah. That's why, right. darn. How much more of this, darn? darn. <laughs> <laughs> so, see that? Is that this is darker here, right? We're gonna get it darker. We're gonna get darker here a little bit. Um. That really gives us that waviness, right? The waviness of um wavy, yes. So this this uh a technique can also be used for these see this this area here right mm -hmm. uh if you have a light uh a light color like orange or yellow uh the transition are easier to do but if you have a darker color like this one here the, then this this technique becomes really important because uh uh because the the the, the passages between in this case from yellow and orange even if I have a, a, a line here that is fairly fairly straight, it doesn't look as sharp as a line between two different colors, right? They really separate. This still gives you a sense of turning on the form. But in this one here is gonna be much more difficult. That's when the, the this darning darning becomes become very, very okay. useful. So now I want to try to get a little bit more waviness in here. Now I'm going to try to darken this part in here below here. Okay, so now for that, I'm going to need a, a darker uh, blue and a darker green and maybe some black. Do you all have little uh, um, uh, Kolinsky brushes or uh, do you have, um, mm -hmm. okay, they, they make a difference. What are we doing here? Well, let's see. So now here, And you can see now all this technique can be used along the stem because that's how that's what he used. He used this little tiny little brush strokes to create the turning of the turning of the form of the stem here, see that here. All that is smoothed nice. out with the with this. Okay. You see a little bit of it. See that the little brush strokes here, right? Yeah. Right. So that's how it's done. Like, look at that. Look how tiny little rest strokes you that. Yes. So, um, it's one of those things that's yeah. re really not intuitive to, to see. You, know, you don't really see it. Sometimes you kind of miss this kind of stuff because it's so it's it's made so that you don't see it actually, right? So, you don't see that that uh, little little passage, you know, gradual passage with tiny little rest strokes. That's the whole point. Mm. You can also do this, see that a, stri a strip here like this first, 
um, fairly sharp uh, in, uh, in the margin and it doesn't matter because then later we soften the passages, we, we soften the, 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 the transitions. So that color should need to be darkened a little bit more, but again, I just don't, I just don't want to go to too too much into this, you know, into this because it would take us the whole night basically, right? And uh, I mean, I think that that we have, we, I think that we have seen like, how this thing works, right? uh mm -hmm. practice okay. practice it if oh, you yeah. can practice you can and uh, maybe use this because there's a lot of dry brush in all of this work in here so you have you're gonna have great uh, ample occasion to to practice this technique so um i so you can see my my rendering is a little bit rougher than than the original one but again given the time right so now what i want to do i want to sharpen the top the mark see how sharp that is right see that mm -hmm. beautifully cut so we can do that now i'm gonna get the dark the dark alizarin crimson alizarin crimson with a little bit of violet in it but make it make the does it alizarin crimson really dark and then and then we go over it here to create on one side, the side of the of the of the of the bud here, the plant that is against the white green uh, is super sharp. The other side, instead, we need to be we need to create a gradation, right? Because this is the margin of it. This that has to be really uh, visibly visibly sharp against the background but then uh, here in the leaf this needs to be kind of softened up right then i would like to go do the same thing with this orange leaf here with the orange color to define the outline of that or those 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 petals more And darken this a bit more, right? This is darker here. So now we're gonna go with the transition here. Sometimes, um, sometimes uh, what you can also do to soften up some areas you use the brush that is, for example, here, and leave a little bit of a, a mark that is too visible. So I do, I rinse it up here, and then I go back in there with it. This is damp now. And then I keep moving it, moving it with a damp brush until I soften up that, and it goes away. See that? But you don't want the brush to be too wet, because if it's too wet, uh, wet in the paper create a halo of uh, when it dries up. A halo of, of distinction between the two colors, you don't want that. Oh, I see. So many things, so little time, right? <laughs> to say the least. But you see that it's, uh, you, you can master this fairly, fairly quickly. Just provided you just, 
Sorry. Do this a few times and, and it, it's going to be easy to understand. So what I'd like to do is that tip here of this, whatever that is, right? It's alien, alien spike is delimited by there is light, light wash of grayer color inside there. And then the outline is created with a very, very thin line of, of color, right? So I'm gonna put the light gray wash there, right? Uh, neutral gray, right? Just any neutral gray color. So I'm, what I'm doing, I'm mixing some uh, yellow, some orange, sorry, some yellow, some violet. Let's see if that does it, right? And then uh, that's the color. All right, that looks good. So now I'm going to block in it here. Very, very light wash, right? Because uh, what it does is, and you, you can even leave the inside a little bit lighter here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I enlarge so you can see it, but like that. And then when this is dry, we go with a tiny, tiny little thin brush. We block in the, the define the outline. So I'm gonna block in this, this gray here too, right? And um, now what I would like to do is go around these petals here and see darken this part here of the orange here and then the shadow in between the the base of the of this of the petal see that this is also mm -hmm. beautiful look how beautiful that is just so delicate right so delicate so let's see if we can block that in with a light violet probably cobalt violet if you have should do it A little bit of cobalt violet. But you're making a gray out of it? No, it's just cobalt violet. Just cobalt violet? Yeah, and then later I'm going to gray it out. It just I'm blocking the base of uh, of that violet. See that here? And then I'm going to gray it out. The later when I put this value here, it's, it's going to be darker. But first I need a base of, of a violet here and here. But very light, right? Very, very light. And then uh, I'm gonna get the darker gray. Um, which I mix with more violet and more yellow. You can also try yellow ochre and violet, right? And uh, so this is yellow ochre and violet. Let's see. Yeah, it kind of works. So I know I want to block it. Even if this is not that visible, I'm going to make this a little bit more visible here in the space between these two, a little wider. Here and here, right? Mm -hmm. And here. See how immediately it gives a depth, right? It gives a sense of depth. It's really this gradation with the, just a couple of values that does the job, right? Meaning blocking first this this uh, very, very pale violet, and then next to it, putting it a slightly darker color that we can also um, soften the edges here. Oh, this is all dark here like this, right? But I don't want this line to be uniform because that flattens the flattens the stem. So one side is sharp, the other side is soft. So I soften this part in here because it makes a form turn, right? Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah, I made a violet, uh, I mean a, a gray with a violet, uh, with a violet and yellow ochre. You can also try um, Turner's yellow, see what happens, just I'm curious. <laughs> but see how that, this, this three, three uh, violet, very light, medium and dark, when they're positioned properly, they turn the form, right? So glad you guys had the patience for this. <laughs> <laughs> so now what I would like to do, I would like to get uh, this, see this margin here, a little bit darker and turning it a little bit with the, um, a darker red orange. And dry brush here. So define this part in here with a sharp margin that this that gives me the, the distinguish this margin from from the adjacent one. But inside the leaf, he has to turn, so I had to create a gradation. Right. So one margin sharp and one turning gradually with a gradation. Right. That softens the, the passage, right? It, makes, it really gives you a sense of volume, right? It's orange. So this technique is uh, is used by by few people now because uh, um, it's a technique that has been developed for uh, the little illumination, the little miniature, like when you people were doing the little painting on uh, of of the loved one and put into a locket. Like they were using this technique, but not necessarily watercolor, but also. Uh, but also it's been used, as you can see, for scientific art, scientific illustration, because it's very, very precise. It can be done in tempera, in gouache, or it can be done uh, in watercolor. And um, since I studied before the advent of computers, right, this is the technique we were using for medical illustration. Um, first creating a, a line drawing like this, but then from here, we would do a, a complete tonal rendering of black and white with graphite. And then over it, layering, layering watercolors and use this technique. And it's very good for, as you can see, for um, detail. And it's very precise, very, very precise. See how this now these leaves are taking are, are taking more volume, right? Compared to oh. these, right? Compared to these, it's a uh, that's why I I want, only want to leave you the before and the after. So we have three stages here, right? We have this the pencil, that's the wash, that's three washes, mm -hmm. two or three washes, and then four or five washes. With with the, so these are washes, but here we start having also the uh, uh, dry dry brush. And of course, in some area, we can even get 
is if you want to, right, let me show you, we we'll get here, we could get even push that sense of depth, even though it's not what we have in the original, and push it darker here, see that? And create another layer of depth, see that, how deep it goes, right? It really goes deep now with that dark red. It's not in the original, but again, we can then, I just wanted to show you how much you can push it, see that here. So now, just a second, we go back. See that, right? How how dark it gets, how deep it gets, right? But a little bit of darker color. So that is also a different temperature color, right? So as we get into the shadow, we want to change at least the temperature, if not the chroma. So with the advent of uh, of uh, computer grata images, this technique has been obsolete. It's become obsolete for scientific art because uh, nobody uses it anymore. But still, it's valid for many things, right? I mean, you can still make scientific illustration like this. You can still make them. That's not. Is that well, botanical painters would have? Yeah, botanical painter I do it right. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, most people now, even botanical or or etc., they start using tablet. That's using, which is a shame because the watercolor is so beautiful. When uh, when botanical is done in watercolor tradition technique, they're just so light and free, and I don't know. But you're right. Uh, botanical lodges. There are there are there are quite a few botanical illustrators that that, that use this technique. Right. The book on the apple I showed you. Uh huh. That's all dry brush. Right? It's all dry brush. Right? Yeah, they were they were yeah. just doing. Yeah, yeah. Because it's incredible. I'll bring it and show it to you. Yeah, please do. Please do. So years ago, there was a show at, at in Washington um, National Gallery about um, this this uh, art done by botanical art and plants, etc. Done starting from uh, uh, Durer and Leonardo and going on, moving on. And they had these gigantic paintings, oil paintings, that were commissioned by the Medici to paint the species of lemons and fruit that they had. And uh, they were just gigantic painting, right? Uh, really big, with all these plants and all this variety of lemons and pears and apples and pumpkins, right? different, different painting, different fruit, different vegetables. They were recording them to because they were collecting them. So they wanted to make sure that it was a sense of pride to have a rare lemon, right, or a rare orange. So they were making this big painting of this botanical specimen, but not just uh, like an object on a white background. The whole setting was like in, in, indoors with all these vases and quite interesting and to see how many specimens of fruits and vegetables they had. And I think they did also the same thing with them. Uh, animals, type of pigs, type of chickens. So uh, I want you to get the, this part in here, the, the, the lines that define this spike in here. So we need now a, a color that is slightly darker gray, blue gray, or violet gray, or some gray color, then the wash that I use for that. And then I go to 
create a very, very faint outline here, right? That, right? And here. If that becomes too uh, sharp, too, too stark in difference of value, I'm gonna soften it up a little bit here on the side. There you go. Now we get this little spike in there. They're gonna block in another spike in here. Okay, so. So let's see now, right? Let's see how it's coming out. You see the, you see the, um, if you've done a good job, you know, you really start seeing the transformation from uh, flat uh, to D to gradually, gradually become three dimensional, right? You see this um, evol evolution, right? Of the, of the, of the specimen that start, start being volumetric, mm -hmm. right? So uh, let's get some more washes here and there, right? I would get that is tricky, right? You want to try that? Right? That's tricky, right? So we have yellow, violet, yellow. See that? So I don't think you don't want to put yellow here because violet and yellow are complementary and they will gray out each other. So we need to create, put the yellow, pale yellow here, create a little soft transition, and then go with the yellow here, soft transition, and then put the violet in here. So the transition is gonna be tricky, but we have seen that we are not afraid of it because, because we are armed now with the knowledge of dry brush. So, Let's start with the pale yellow, right? So I can, I can here, I can put the pale yellow also where the thing is because anyway, the pale yellow is gonna be so weak that it's not gonna make it make an influence. You're gonna have an influence on, uh, on the uh, red, right? So we're blocking the pale yellow here, right? And then um, what we do, raise the brush and then take off the, the extra uh, uh, water and then soften this with a brush. So that you have, you don't have a sharp line. See that you don't want a sharp line there. So let's do the same thing on the other side here. I wouldn't worry about this this thing in the middle because we can simply paint it over over that bud because it's darker, right? It's windy, it's gonna be windy tonight. Hope I hope trees will not fall or we don't so hope we're not gonna lose power. So you guys don't have any wind right, right? Interesting. Not here. Not here. So now what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna put the violet. This is gonna be still a bit wet. I'm gonna put mix the violet and then a very pale violet, right? Uh, and block it there, here. Very pale, right? Here and here. And because this area here probably is still a little bit wet, the yellow is still a bit wet, I can dry the brush rinse it, dry it, and then 
blend the two areas of violet and yellow like that. See that? Now we blended it and then um, we could block in a a lizarding crimson crest right here. A lizarding crimson crest here, thin. And if the lower margin is soft, actually it's good because if you look at the lower margin of this uh, in the original is softer. We want the sharp outline here, but below there is the color will bleed out, will blend. And uh, what happening here, um, in this case here still will be sharp. So I rinse, dry the brush, Go over here like this, soften that. See that? The difference, right? Soften that a little bit. Before it dries up, right? Before it dries up, soften it. And now we have uh, uh, this kind of soft lower margin here right against the sharp margin above so now um oh, i need to block in the, the violet here too that is blue right yeah that is the blue part here it's this blue spiky thing, right? But this is the violet there. Okay, so blue there too, orange, yellow. Then we can block in. Now I would leave this alone now to dry a little bit, but then later we can go over it with uh, uh, with a dry brush, right? But um, now later, not much later, because <laughs> we almost, almost there. So let me let me see if I can can block in just that's the next level, right? So now basically, I blocked in the foundation, right? Which which I was looking for the weakest for the weakest of the colors in here. That pale yellow right here, that pale violet, and now with the a slightly darker color. We go over it and we extend the um the the, the, the tonal scale of that uh, the value right you extend the value of that yellow and the violet so let's see right quickly so here now with the dry brush i can start blocking in this color here like this right here And I'm going to merge it a little bit. I'm going to go over into the violet a little bit because there's an area in between it is a little bit kind of transitional, right? This area here. Now, is, is that a deeper yellow? Yeah, it's a darker yellow, right? It's a darker yellow. Okay. The same yellow that I used before. It's uh, so it's not not dark. It's the same yellow, but it's it's less diluted. Okay. And now here, darker here. Then uh, I want to see the violet, right? I want to try to create the, the transition here with the violet, um, where at the margin here, I have this violet here, right? So this is the thing that you can do to speed up uh, this, this uh, method, right? Use a bigger brush. Use the same method of, uh, of little line, but the brush being a little bit wider, the, the marks are a little bit wider, and uh, you can probably go on for a little bit longer with um, um, brushing because 
the, the brush has more surface, so it, it, it kind of contains more paint. Then, uh, um, and then you can go back with now slightly finer lines. See that here? To create a, a little bit of a transition between one, she's one, two, three, right? But eventually, you had to resort to the small little brush, right? But this this kind of helps you speeding up the transition. And if this is too light, we just get uh, a wash like this over it of color and you darken see how quickly you darken right here and here this part in here looks like the sun green so we're gonna put some green back down there right it looks like it's a warm green more yellow green here so first we can block in a a wash that is, you know, a little bit wider like this. And then I merge the two by creating the transition between the green and the violet with, with a dry brush. So that needs to be way darker. So, right, we need to push it darker. So I can darken this a little bit more, same, same method. And then um, soften up the intermediate passage. And then when I get really to have to turn it more and more, I use I use the I use the dry brush. Which green? Yellow green. Yellow green. Yellow green. Yeah, yellow green. So because see how. It got the yellowish cast in there, see that? It's not so yes. super chromatic, but it's yellow green. And then you, I look at the green, I, at the yellow, see there, it's much more pronounced than the yellow I have. So that's fine, that's fine. We simply take more yellow, right? And then we go over here with the wash, see that here. But as we, as we notice, on as it goes to the violet, it it stopped and it gets more violent, so I'm going to soften it up to that. So in this case here, now I need to block in a transition between that violet here, right? Uh -huh. But now I need the small brush, and the small brush will permit you me to get gradually, gradually go for this dark value to a lighter value then dark again right here Of course, that is this this color is darker here, so I'm gonna push the violet here, right? Because also there's a shadow. You see the shadow there? Probably is done with this this cast shadow here, or the flowers probably done with uh, uh with these little tiny little brush strokes, right? So now, guys, um, because this technique is a, uh, is a secret, so you're not supposed to talk to anybody about this technique, right? Oh, okay. okay. This is a secret. You just don't tell anybody. It's a, it's one of those trade things uh, for the medieval guilds, right, that you don't tell. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> on my Scott's honor. <laughs> and so on, right? So we see how gradually we get we get to manage those transitions. Of course, the transition need to be um, developed, right? Extended tonally, um, but. Um, but I kind of glad we did this sort of um, really didactic. This is really didactic because you see all the stitch. Actually, no, to have it really didactic, I need uh, a couple of leaves just yellow, right? So let me add a couple of yellow leaves and then we go eat something, right? So let's say this these petals here need to be yellow here, right? And this one here also, and I'm gonna paint around it. Shouldn't be doing this, but. It's a different yellow, right? Yeah, it's the yellow that I use for those, right? For those. But this one had a little bit of orange in it. This one doesn't. This one doesn't, yeah. And then I soften up this part in here, right? And, uh, uh, here, what we could do, we could put another yellow with the orange, so we have all the stages, right? Yellow here. And the orange, uh, the orange wash. They gradually soften up as it gets toward the base of the petal, see that softens up here. And then eventually we would have to, have to add another, another uh, layer, which is the layer with this, with these lines in here, this tree, which we, I guess we can put them here, right? I'm gonna put them here. So now it's slightly darker red. And then we have these weaves. Now that was red and not orange. This is, this is, uh, um, it is, uh, uh, the really yellow crazy. with a little bit more of, a little bit more of cadmium cadmium red oh, okay. cadmium red right. so I, I gradually yeah. increased so I did the uh, see pale yellow right uh, a little bit uh, more yellow with the, uh, a tiny tiny little bit of cadmium and uh, in here instead I have more cadmium and in there gradually more and more cadmium red to move it more toward the toward the red right so we have all these passages. Also that blue, this blue thing here, right? I'm gonna block it in here. It really makes me wanna go out and buy this flower. Okay, guys, any question? Okay. Any question about okay. this? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Good. Nice, Cynthia. Oh, my goodness, no. <laughs>
<laughs> so, yeah. so this this is uh, this is the stuff that you want to do in a uh, in a couple of session three three session right? Not if you're an illustrator, no, you had to do it one day, right? And then again collect. But if you want to enjoy it, you just take a break. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Take a break because what happened is your your um, attention uh, will kind of wane a little bit, and then you tend to, you know, do it thing quickly and fast, and then you ruin it. So take a break and then finish it in two or three days. But I think you understand the technique now, right? You understand this technique now, this this layering, right? Gradual layering and then finishing with uh, the dry brush, uh, creating, the, creating the merging, a very, very accurate and controlled merging with, uh, with the dry brush, right? All right, guys. So I'm going to see if I can... Find a little cr right, cr little critter for next week, right? A little a cute animal for next week, right? Maybe fur, right? Fur or, I don't know, fur. Maybe you see what kind of furry animal, right? Would you be able to email me the picture again like you did this tweet? Uh, this this image here? No, I have that. The, the animal we're going to do. Oh, the animal. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm looking for it. Uh, I'm going to oh, email. So... Okay. I, I got I got a koala, I got a kangaroo, and uh, a fish. But I think I was thinking koala or kangaroo or or platypus or platypus. One of one of the three. We'll see <laughs> some some furry animal. Right. We'll see what I can find. Right. Okay. All right, guys. I can send you a dog. Okay. All okay. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Much. Good okay. Night, good, night, good night, guys. Good night. Good night, John. Yep. Good night. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Come on. Did you receive my um my my oh god I can't talk my flower from last week? Oh, the, that was from this. Yeah. The, the um. Uh, the pineapple. The pineapple. Oh, the pineapple. I, I thought I answered it. Didn't I answer it? Oh, I, oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know if you did. No, maybe maybe I didn't. I thought I did, but maybe maybe I didn't. Let me check. Let me check again, right? Because sometimes what I do, I see a work. I see the work that you guys uh -huh. post. I say, oh, wow, this is not going to answer later. And then what happened? You really open it, and I forgot. I forgot that. So let me check, right? Let me check. I think what I saw. All the pineapple that you posted are very good, all of them. Uh, so I'm gonna look at it again, and then, uh, and then, uh, and then, and then give you a comment, right? Um, okay, great. On it, right? Okay. Sorry, I Bye. missed it. Good, good night. Okay. <laughs> bye, bye, guys. Bye, bye. Good, good night. night. Good night, Roberto. Good, good night. Good night. Buenos apetitos. Gracias. <laughs> All right. <sighs>